Hi, this is Doc from OnTheMoneyOptions.com and today I want to talk about why stocks fluctuate every time there's any conversation about the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. This comes up every time there's a Federal Minutes that come out or an economic report that comes out that suggests that maybe the Fed is ready to raise rates. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the intrinsic value of a stock and it's the result of a complex set of factors and is the result of a mathematical equation. The intrinsic value is subject to market forces which will affect the market price of the stock but the focus of this video is on how the intrinsic value of the stock is calculated. We will look at a very simplified example using two components, the capital asset pricing model and the dividend growth model. The math is not important, just the concept, so don't worry, this is not a math class. Just a simple example so you'll understand what is happening when interest rate conversations come up. On the left is a capital asset pricing model and on the right is a dividend growth model. The components of the capital asset pricing model include the risk-free rate of return, which is often the 10-year treasury note that is used. So once we have those, this information in, that gives us a required rate of return which is plugged into the dividend growth model on the right. The dividend growth model takes into account the current dividend of the company and the growth rate of that dividend to give us a intrinsic value of the stock. The required rate of return it's in the denominator comes over from the capital asset pricing model. Now here's an example. We're looking at a market return of 8% beta at 0.85, which simply means that this particular stock moves a little bit less than the market moves. The dividend, DO, is the dividend of $1.88 annually, and we're looking at a 5% growth rate on the dividend. We're using 2.5% as our risk-free interest rate variable, and you'll see from the on the left, I've plugged in in red where we put that variable in each time. And it comes out with a required rate of return of 0 0.072. Now that's 7.2%. 7, uh, we take that and plug it into the dividend pricing model on the right. And we look at a $1.88 dividend with a growth rate of 5%. And we come down to an intrinsic value of the stock at $89.72. Now this intrinsic value will be used to measure whether a stock is overpriced or underpriced in the current market. Now let's change one variable. We're going to change the, let's say the Fed's raised the rate to 3% and we're going to change the risk-free rate just to 3%. That is the only change we're going to make in this calculation. You'll see that the required rate of return on the left is now 0 0.073 or 7.3%. When we plug that into the calculation on the right, you see that now the intrinsic value of the stock has dropped down to $85.83. So let's put the two side by side and look at it. The only thing we've changed in both equations is the risk-free rate that we're using that is for our example. We see that the stock price has dropped $3.89 from a 1.5% rise in the federal interest rates. That's a 4.3% reduction in the intrinsic value of the stock. Now you might ask, why is this such a big deal? Well, here's why. The value of all the stocks just on the New York Stock Exchange is $24.6 trillion. In this example, if every stock was devalued by 4%, that is $9.84 billion. And you don't want to be the person on the receiving end of that reduction. So here are the key points that I want to bring out by this very quick and short example. The stock market's always looking forward, six months to 18 months. Analysts are always anticipating interest rate changes. The analysts, they hang on every word that comes out of the Federal Reserve. And the stock market is very sensitive to any global issue that might affect interest rates. So this is the reason why you see the market get very jumpy when there's any conversation about an interest rate change or something going on like a Greek debt issue that might cause a default which might affect rates which might, you know, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, it's a lot going on, but it's a real simple explanation of what's happening. I hope this helps you and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Don't miss a single installment of On The Money Options Private Briefing. Just sign up on my website and I will include you in all future installments of the Private Briefing. 
We respect your privacy and your email will not be shared from this site. So until next time, this is David, or as they call me Doc, I hope for you fun trading and smart investing.